to the third episode of Mean Inspiration or whenever the fuck I release this. I don't know <laughs> if it's going to be the third one. It might uh, get bumped up to first. Listen, it might get to first because honestly, m- the young man that's with me today, little <laughs> Esther, is I would say people would be shocked that we didn't go to school together because there's so much chemistry. You are such a gentleman. <laughs> On my way here, I got a text from you offering to get me a note milk latte. Oh, I asked Siri to send it. Oh. I meant nut milk. Did You didn't mean oat milk? No, I meant oat, meant oat milk. Okay. And then instead, when you didn't respond in time, I got myself one to see what this life is How like. How is it? You know, I'm still a little bit torn on oat milk because it's because a little thick. It's too thick. Thick is like you want your milk to be thick and creamy. You don't want thin. Then you might as well have water. Thickness is like. I have something to tell you that you're going to get upset about. I was raised on skim milk. My parents I was are trash. Too, and that's My parents what, are trash. I, know, I just want to say <laughs> they're garbage. Who raises their kids on fucking skim milk? By the I, way, was I was raised on milk. skim milk too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just insult. Makes sense. My mom is watching. My mom this morning was like, "I see you're doing Annie's podcast." I'm like, "How do you know that? <laughs> How does my mom know that? That makes me mad." Your mom? Should we say what happened when I did your show that your mom came to? What happened? Do you remember when she? Who was her favorite? Must have been you. Oh, you don't remember? I'll never forget it. Tell me. I like a compliment through a mother to her own <laughs> child. I have friends like that where it's like their parents like can't really give them the compliment, no, so they yeah. have to give it through their friend. Oh, my mom. Yeah. What did she compliment me? She said no. She told she told you that I was the best one on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on her, her own daughter. Oh, show. I remember by headlining night, <laughs> you. I had like four of my girlfriends open for me, and she said that you were the funniest. <laughs> <laughs> Esther had her name in lights. Like, she had her name in lights. Her mom was there. I mean, it was like, it couldn't have been a more perfect setup. And she killed. You know, sometimes other people, you know, <laughs> kill a tiny bit of No, Look. but most of the thing that was even funny was when we were being funny together. Yeah, that's true. But so she, I think she just liked when I was taking you down. <laughs> yes, my parents are very into that. <laughs> It's cool. That's why we're the same as our parents really look down on us. Our parents have some weird, yeah, I don't know what it is. And they've just messed us up completely. I think I told you this the other day, but I, my mom told me that when I was little, I used to be gated into my room <laughs> and that I would cry and scream to get out because I hated sleeping alone. And that when my mom would wake up in the morning, she'd come and she'd find me asleep hanging on to the gate. <laughs> And I'm like, that's everything you need to know. I know you have something similar. You just blocked it out. Little Esther is totally a gate hanger, for sure. (laughs) Uh, I have the privilege of knowing her. You guys have observed her, but (laughs) she's clangy. (laughs) It's so fun. I think that's what makes us get along so much. We we lean into our codependency with each other. Yes, you just take it. (laughs) <laughs> I've called Esther and she's done this to me too. Yeah. 17 times in a row. It's true. We have a good policy. <laughs> We're like, it's okay to call a thousand times in a row. It's okay for me to look at my phone at the end of the day and have seven missed calls from yeah. you. I'm like, totally normal. And then not call you till the next it's day. It's okay. We're, the friendship will stay. Yeah. The friendship will stay. <laughs> Esther and I met, uh, we've had, we've fired two of the same managers. Oh my God. You have to say that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Uh, they should hear it. You missed out on this. Um, they're all this watching. This ship. This, b- you, this ship has sailed, okay? <laughs> I have a lot of props, whatever. Uh, who needs attention? Me. Um, but so when we first met, we had the same manager. I had just gone to the comedy store. Yeah. And I went, I'd heard of Esther. Oh, my God. Of li- this little Esther. This little Jew creature. I was like, it's so weird. Her first name is Little. Isn't that cute? She had a little stage name since the beginning. You know, someone recently was like, can I bring you up as that? I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to, I need to go back to using that as my main name. I love it. People don't love Pavitsky, (laughs) especially when you're brought up by hosts on shows. People don't love that. It's funny that it's like little could be looked at as a negative thing. And you're like, I would rather take like a hazing (laughs) than have my own Jew name. (laughs) Um. No, I knew you as Little Esther. I like you as Little Esther. Yeah, people are into it, I feel. I call you Little Esther to you. Little Esther. Yeah, a lot of people do that. I used to have a boyfriend that would do that. You used to have a boyfriend? (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know you were gay. (laughs) Are you you a male homosexual? (laughs) 
my god. So we met in the hallway and we one upped each other. Do you care if we tell that story? No, I don't care. I know I grabbed your. I'm Harvey Weinstein. I grabbed your tits. She's the grim. What do we call you? The grim groomer. She's the grim groomer. Is another <laughs> nickname. It's little Esther or the grim groomer. I this should not. I do. I have a problem with touching women. Me too. I know it's bad. People don't. I'm people, gonna start grabbing balls. No, I'm getting that sick I of this. Do. I'm gonna start grabbing dicks. I'm being. Everyone's saying no in the room. No. Yeah. Every little every person, including this lady's head, you can't see her, is shaking no. Whatever, I don't care. Arrest me. Grab publicity. Don't, just don't grab my dick, okay? Esther, I couldn't find it. It's so tiny. <laughs> I don't want to be rude. Esther has a really small dick. <laughs> Is that okay for me to say? I did Esther's podcast 47 years ago, <laughs> and she goes, she's like, you shave your happy trail. Is that okay to say? And I was like, <laughs> no, what? <laughs> the craziest thing. And she was lying. Who would do that? I pluck. Um, okay, so we met in the hallway. I went... Oh, you're little Esther. What? We have the same manager. Oh, yeah. And then how did it go down? I don't know. I think I just grabbed she. I boots. think she grabbed my breast out of my shirt. I do believe it wasn't... Was it over the top, over the shirt or under? I don't remember the specifics. I will tell you that it ended with... it. This is how it felt. When you go up to someone and they're like, Oh, I'm going to see how open you are. <laughs> and I was like, Oh... You picked the right bit because both <laughs> of our know. tits were out within like four minutes. Mind <laughs> 40 you, this seconds, was like seven to eight years ago. I'm not like that we anymore. We don't flash our boobs anymore. I've changed. I've I've seen a therapist. <laughs> I'm in a serious relationship. Are you considering me a therapist and a serious <laughs> partner in a relationship with you? <laughs> Do you see other people than me ever? I take so much of your time. Um, but yeah, it was, it felt like, and I think Esther and I are, what's fun about us is that we will, if I don't. If you don't mind me saying so myself, just bragging about how cool we are. No, I think what makes us good friends is that we will like never back down. Yeah. Also, we're very different. We are different. We are very similar, but we're also, as Whitney Cummings <laughs> pointed out, we're very different. She said we're very different. Look how nice my pool is. <laughs> <laughs> she Whitney's so funny because she's so pretty and so successful and doesn't she really I really don't know if she knows it I it's, know it's so I've never been allowed to be near a place or a person that looks like that so when we were at her house I honestly was like okay if I go out in the backyard and just like bury like a little hole I could live in this <laughs> hole <laughs> <laughs> and I, she won't notice and I could like use the pool I wanted to trim a fingernail and, and just bury it there and then maybe I would grow, grow back, back <laughs> and then be a part of that land. no then your future DNA like when science gets there can bring you back to life and I think they would uh, my DNA would be stronger because they'd be like oh this is like a very like self-sufficient rich person like no person would be allowed on this land that isn't yes gonna change things mm -hmm. and her face is like I can't even believe her face I had to run from her remember I ran away from her I was like you're a celebrity get away I know she's too pretty um all right so that's how we met and then we used to go hiking. Did we go mm -hmm. hiking a lot or did we just go one monumental time? A few times we hiked. That was back when I still hiked. Well, you lived in West, you lived right next to Runyon. It was yeah. Different. Also, I feel like when you're new to LA, you go to Runyon Canyon. Like, yeah. so if you want to meet people that are new to LA, you just go there. But then after like three years, you're like, this is gross. It's yeah. hot. You're just like, I can't keep getting my makeup done before I go on this hike. There's it's just too much. Everyone's just has hair and makeup before they go. There's no parking. Everyone, also everyone's new to LA. So they're, yeah, like you said, they're like 21 and like groomed. Yeah. I can't, I'm Last hack. time I went to Runyon, there was a guy with this little dragon thing were you with me i was with carlos no but i've heard this so it was this little dragon thing this yellow dragon thing i posted a picture on my instagram but it and the guy was holding it, and it was had a little outfit made out of a sock and he was like do you want to hold it and i was like yeah i want to hold this little it's reptile like a carnival dragon. it was so cool i was like this is great and i was playing with it and i was like kissing its mouth and it was like licking its little tongue out and i was just like had it all over me it was in my car and then later that night after i posted the picture i ran into this guy at the comedy store and he's like I know a lot about reptiles. That is one of the most dangerous. <laughs> he goes, the fact that you had the, they, he's like, they t take limbs off. You could have lost fingers, your nose, could have poked your eye out. He's like, it's insane that that guy is, it made me laugh so, I mean, I had it all <laughs> over me. I was like, oh, do you want to breast? I was taking like breastfeeding pictures. It could have just taken that a nipple. That can't be, that's crazy. And it just hasn't lashed out yet. 
Wow. It's so funny. I feel like you're talking about me. It's you. You had me all over you, and you're just waiting for me to strike. I breastfed you. Yeah, all of it. (laughs) The numbers crunch if I do take a line from your set. All right, so we were on. There are two things I really remember from those early hikes. One was uh, when we would follow people. We would follow people up, and we would hear the name of their dog. And then when they, do you remember this? Yeah. And then when they weren't paying attention, we would try to get their dog to come to us. <laughs> so we'd be like, come here, Max. <laughs> Max. I'm your mommy now. <laughs> yeah. Come to us. <gasps> Can you say milk carton? You're getting stolen. Because we both at that time were in a place in our life where we had both gotten dogs and then given them to our parents. <laughs> now, I will say that I have since graduated to a dog owner. I now own my dog and it's in my, it lives with me. Why do you make it sound so slavey? <laughs> You're like, I make her pick cotton in the back. Annie, that's not funny. <laughs> it's funny. It's not. She what? She's not black. Anyway, she, okay, so yours is Pepper that you gave away. I gave away Pepper. And I gave away Punky. I mean, it's almost the same name, too. <laughs> I had my dog for four years, and then I, I quit drinking in Santa Fe. You had yours four and a half? One and a half. One and a half. Oh, you really gave It them. might actually be a half. <laughs> One half. <laughs> <laughs> I gave my dog away because I, I, I moved to New York. Because you were a open crazy mix. person. But I stopped. I stopped drinking. Here's the thing. This is actually a PSA to all people in comedy. If you're doing open mics, you cannot have a dog. It's pathetic. Like your open mics are your life, and then if you're like also like me at the time, I had like three side jobs. This is crazy. Yeah. Like I'm trying to do open mics, have all these side gigs. I could not have a dog yeah. by myself. Well, it's yeah, you're you're working at night and you're working during the day. You know, you, you, there's no time. Although that being said, I don't think I could live without a dog. So I don't know. I guess if I have to start over in comedy, I'm going to be at a real crossroads. When you said dog, did you mean me? You couldn't live without me? <laughs> <laughs> I got jealous. Did you see my face get hurt? What do you mean you couldn't live without a dog? <laughs> what about me, bitch? Um, so I gave my dog up, though, because I quit drinking and started doing comedy. And I... I realized that my dog ownership was all liquid courage. Like, once I quit drinking, I was like, I can't do that. What was I thinking? <laughs> I can't train this dog. The dog was like shitting and pissing everywhere. Just, I had a, in Santa Fe, I had a door that was broken and the dog would just run out and she would just come back. And That's so scary. I know. Well, my parents did that with our dog when we were going. Is Santa school. Fe super nice? I feel like that's like the dream of like warm weather, affordability, livability. No? It snows. I mean, affordability and livability is so funny. And you know nothing about this I'm thing. talking it's about It's so funny old... for you to say those terms. I'm, I'm really planning for my older life. <laughs> this, is, this is Esther's uh, fiance has said those words around her. No, and she's she like, doesn't... I'm going to try using those words this <laughs> no, week. No, no, no. I am all about being an old woman like i'm preparing well you got the name (laughs) halfway there bitch (laughs) like i just want to be an old woman in a small town i want to be sitting in that coffee shop and i want to be the one who starts i want to be the one who starts the annoying conversation with a young person i cannot wait well you'll meet your match because there'll be an annie letterman there at some point (laughs) who starts the conversation with you i went to a coffee shop today and i had to refrain from talking to this one kooky old lady true when i'm on the phone with you like annie will be walking to her coffee shop and then she'll get to her coffee shop and i just sit there on the other end silently while i hear her have a 10 minute conversation with the barista and then with the there's uh, two guys that look alike but they're not brothers i always talk to them at the coffee shop like you are living that small town life of like from santa fe it's from living in santa fe See, i knew it no, Santa Fe is a good place to be an old lady. It's not a good place to be a young lady or Why? young lad. It's just I drank a lot. It was too small. Do you think though, if you that was just your drink, your drinking was the problem and not the whole town? <laughs> I blame the town. Santa Fe, it's fucking on. No, it was just hard. It just was like it's hard to be in such a you know everyone. It was cool. I had a little scooter I would ride around. I'd be is, like, beep beep hottie. Is that where Mark Marin is from? He's from Albuquerque. Okay. And so Albuquerque is more of a city, but it's also not. I did a hot air balloon ride over Albuquerque once, and I was like, this has got to be the ugliest place I've ever seen. You did a hot air balloon ride? Yeah, and I'd do it again. I went skydiving, too, thought it was boring. Are you like a rich man in a cartoon? That's so cool. (laughs) I had, like, twiddled my mustache. (laughs) I had a uh, monocle. I was like, hello up here. (laughs) I went with You spotted me down there waving, and then you rescued me? Actually, I went with this uh, lesbian girl that I was like, she was grooming me. (laughs) She was planting seeds. I was like, I don't think I'm gay. And she's like, don't you think the fact that you never thought you were gay means you're gay? And I was what? like, 
It, I'm not kidding. I was drinking so much at the time, and I was hooking up with a, like a meathead, like jujitsu guy. And this was back in the day, so he was really extra meatheady. And I was like, me. She got in my head. I was like, maybe that is real. So much Jaeger. No, I know you're not gay. I'm not gay. I've pushed it to the limit, and I know <laughs> that you're not. Listen, we'd be 69ing right now. If I was gay. <laughs> this would be a very. We'd be getting a lot of money on Patreon right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, but yeah, no, I. I'm not gay. She ended up eventually fingering me. What? Yeah. Annie. She fingered me once. Oh, my goodness. We would make out, and it was nice. Her lips were soft and stuff, but she looked like a boy. So then when she fingered... Are you getting jealous? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when she fingered me, it was just like, this is not a penis. This is not a penis. And um, it felt kind of boring. No, I don't know. It cool. also felt like... It kind of felt like she was fingering homophobia into me. Like, it felt like I was like, this feels like... I, now I believe in God all of a sudden, and it feels like God doesn't want this. It feels like this is against God. Oh, no. And it didn't, it didn't go out to anyone else. It didn't extend to my feelings for other people, but I was like, yeah, I'm not gay. Wow. I'm not gay. So then I was like, can you remove your... I turned into a redneck. I was like... Get your gay fingers. I was like, get your gay fingers out my pussy. Let's go smoke a Newport. But that is what incites hate, I feel like, is people who, like, kind of go there and then get mad at themselves for going there. Yeah, for sure. So I mean, I, I wasn't mad at myself. are gay. I wasn't mad at myself. I was mad at that sinner. <laughs> no, she's cool. I actually like her. I'm still friends with her. But when we were on... The, I'm Not after this now. airs. <laughs> she doesn't like men have to listen. <laughs> Um, come on, she's busy. She's marching. But um <laughs> she's protesting somewhere. We protested a lot after the march and then I was like I eased back into regular living. Oh god. <laughs> I remembered I'm not a lesbian again. <laughs> but we um she we were on this hot air balloon ride. There was another person there, but I'm thinking back I'm like how rom- I mean, this girl must have been like we're going to be together forever. <laughs> We're on a hot air balloon ride together. True. That's so intimate. It's really intimate. Like, you, we could die. Yeah. But then they, when we were landing, the guy was like, brace yourself, brace yourself. And he got very like, he, I'm like, what do you mean? Why are you yelling all of a sudden? And then we had a rough landing and it like skidded on the ground. And the bucket that we're in f- like flipped over and we flung out and she ended up with him. I, I don't know if she was on. T- I think he was on top of her. He was like pinning her down sexually, like not on purpose, but. It was pretty funny. Wow. We weren't hurt, but it was like, oh. It was, so it was a hot air balloon threesome. It was a really hot, it was a hot air balloon. <laughs> there I, wasn't much air except for queefs that got fingered into us. Anyway. When I was in like, I want to say sixth grade, I was in a car accident where our car flipped over and. That it, explains so much. I, I know. Brain damage. My, it was, I was sleeping over at my best friend Christina's house and her grandma. Who? <laughs> my best friend Christina from the twin, yeah, okay. and um, her grandma was driving us to Burger King to get Cinestics or Cin- no Cinnaminis, <laughs> and our car flipped over, and she like I obviously as you can guess like ah like was screaming like suspended in the air so scared <laughs> and Christina just like kicks the door open like unbuckles me and her grandma and like saves us. Now I'm thinking back and I'm like, is that why I'm obsessed with her? Because she saved me out of the. Well, I have some theories about your obsession with Christina. Oh, no. We were at the comedy store, and her twin brother had come to your show. Yeah. And you went, oh, my God. He's twins with my my best friend. Yeah. And, of course, that triggered me. But <laughs> And she goes, oh, this is my friend Annie. She has a twin brother, too. And she, you go, why do all my best friends have twins? And it's like, because we're codependent. Yeah, but, Obviously. but her and her twin don't get along. My twin does not give me enough. Do you understand? We have a hole in our hearts. <laughs> That little Esther, we we need a young boy that's not giving us attention, and then we have you. Wait, <laughs> to give us attention. Oh, I see, I see. You're our male counterpart. Mm. You are more feminine than me, but it's yes. fun to call you a young boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I definitely would have kicked the door. You know, I would have saved you. No, the I know. Same way she would have. It's yeah. true. I would have lifted the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you put the car back over. <laughs> I would have slapped the grandmother. Like, why did you do that? Um. Yeah, car accidents are scary. Did you hurt yourself at all? Not in the slightest. Were it, you in shock for a long time? I, I was really scared and like obviously milked the attention factor. <laughs> but no, no one was hurt. We were all three of us were completely fine. Would you say you treated it like a broken toe? 
<laughs> the broken toe was actually the worst injury I've ever had. People want to make it was the worst injury I've ever had. People want to make fun <laughs> of me that oh, it's just a toe that broke. You made a big deal out of it, Esther. I couldn't walk. When imagine you, not being able to walk, that's really challenging if you're used to being able to walk. When you had to tell me it was your pinky toe, <laughs> when I when I was like, which toe is it? And you. You took a pregnant pause to really. <laughs> you knew it was coming. It. Let's okay. reenact it. I was like, oh, so you broke your toe? That sucks. Which toe is it? Oh, my pinky toe. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I was like, how'd you break it? And you broke it running into a foam roller. <laughs> Not exercising, running into exercise equipment. <laughs> running, I'm assuming, away from the gym. <laughs> the f a foam roller, if you don't know, it's made of soft foam. <laughs> and yes, I now know I need calcium. It's <laughs> so bad. You actually, though, it's you, skim milk. You, coined, you coined the best phrase out of this whole thing. Because right after I told you, you were like, I feel like you've al always had the personality of a person with a broken <laughs> toe. <laughs> <laughs> with like an injury that sucks but kind of doesn't like it's just <laughs> enough to make you kind of need extra care yeah you are a broken toe <laughs> just a little walking around broken permanent toe. okay so the other thing i remember from our hike oh boy esther and i were very obsessed with having perfect bodies at that point it's so sad that the media you did this to us okay i mean uh, i don't know who the fuck did it to us but it was i actually know who it was it was one specific person, but we're not going to mention oh. on here. We had one friend that was pretty much calling us fat every time they saw us. <laughs> True. But so we, our eating disorders were ripe. I think, was that when I had the e-show or was it around that time? No, this was before. This was when you were just doing Chelsea Lately. Okay. So I was doing some TV stuff and I was starting to get really like paranoid. I didn't want to, camera adds 10 pounds Because you know, the real truth of it is you had just moved to LA right. and you were really going through that new to LA. I right. I was hot. wearing hair extensions. Yeah. Everything was weird. Yeah. But so I really wanted, so Esther and I, what we would do is we would stalk hot girls. Like I would go up to people in grocery stores. I would check their cart. Like, what are they buying? It's so true. I did this. Too. It was pathetic. It's like pathetic. now looking back, I'm like, it's insane. Hot, no one has the answer. You, it's genetic. Also now I'm like, I'm trying to look for like little chubby girls that are looking at my cart and they never are. I'm like, <laughs> I'll know I'm skinny when I see a fucking girl. And like, I'm right here looking at you. I get it. <laughs> But so we were on this hike and there was this like tattooed girl with just a ripped body. She was so muscular. She had such big boobs. She was so blonde and pretty. Like she just had all of the makings. of. She's like what you want when you go to Runyon Canyon. You want to yeah. see this girl. She was Runyon babe. And she was, I feel like she was even just talking to someone driving. I think someone had just stopped her in a car. She was standing outside because we later found out she lived right there. So she was standing outside her building. Right. So Esther was like, go ask her. Yeah. This is why, this is what's fun. Like, we will kind of socially push each other to be humiliated. Yes. To humiliating situations. Yes. I notice when I'm with Caroline, too, I do this. I'm like, if she says she's scared to do something, I'm like, you literally now have no choice but to yeah. do that. Yeah, and it's better. I think yeah. it's fun because you get to play the tape through the end, and it's not. This did turn into a weird tape. <laughs> <laughs> so Esther's like, go talk to her. I think I was the one that went to I don't her, even right? know. I just know Who one knows? of us One of us like, went up to her and we're like, you're so hot. I feel like I remember saying this. I feel like I was like, you're so hot. What do you do? Like, why is your body like this? And she went, oh, I just like, I'll show you. She goes, I live right here. Do you want to come? I'll show you no. what's in my fridge. Did we hike together first or no? No, because she had to go up and get her ankle weights. Oh, oh yeah. So she, or maybe we hiked first. I don't know. Either way, she instantly invited us to her We home. went into her and we're like, great. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Someone likes us. Attention. <laughs> so we go up to her apartment. It's right there. And she opens up her fridge and she eats like figs and vegetables. Yeah. It was very like, oh, I don't have the, I'm not in the income bracket to eat this way. She offered to give us Botox. She said, yeah, if you guys ever want Botox, I have Botox right here. <laughs> she did. She's an administrator of Botox. A living room Botox sesh. Her super hot man was in the living room practicing MMA fighting and then asked us if he, we, if we wanted to watch a DVD of his MMA fight. And I was like, I don't I'm remember good. that part. At all because I definitely do. I was blinded by the headlights. <laughs> all right. So then she goes into her room. She gets ankle weights, right? She, she like, she, gets she's like, up. we're gonna go on a hike. She's like, you need ankle weights, which is already we're already going the easy route. I'm running. Yeah, that was... we're already like, what do you mean ankle weights? <laughs> but we did buy them that day. We went to Big Eight <laughs> or Big Five, the same place where the Menendez brothers bought their shotgun that killed their parents. We got our ankle weights. Oh my god, I wish I knew that. I'd be calling us the Menendez sisters. <laughs> Wow, we didn't kill our parents, but we did give them dogs. Okay. Um, so then, okay, so then she 
is changing. This must have been after the hike. I Why was she changing? I don't know. She was like, do you want to see my boobs? Oh, yeah. She was topless within <laughs> 10 seconds of us knowing her. We saw her boobs. We saw her boobs. They were great. Then we went whether then we went on a hike together. We hiked. We immediately we found out she was my boyfriend's nurse, <laughs> which is obviously very sketchy if you're me. <laughs> like you're the person administrating my yeah. boyfriend's And then it's like Dave IVs. It's like has Dave been just getting Botox injected into his joints <laughs> this whole time? <laughs> And sure enough, I ask him, and he's like, oh, Nurse Bonnie. He's the hot Bonnie. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you didn't tell me your nurse had, it's like, the hottest triple D tits. We stopped her. She's so hot, we stopped her on the street. <laughs> like, <laughs> and this is who gives you your remicated. And then, uh, you know, I'm still friends with her on Instagram. I don't know if I ever had her on Instagram. I, You know I have trouble. She was so kind, so beautiful. She was really nice. That's She's what so you hot, want. So nice. You want to meet a, a hot, generous She's quite person. religious, but also a bad girl. That's what's fun about her. Ooh, the dream. Yeah, I'm like, what do you... The double threat. I'm like, you definitely have some stuff to confess, bitch. <laughs> You've been a bad girl. I, and I am... I don't know if she's going to end up listening to this or not, but if she does, I'm pretty sure, Bonnie, you were trying to fucking thing were you trying to thank me no uh she called me once after all oh, of you this, guys had like a post she called there was a lot that kept going on she called me from like long beach and was like will you come pick me up and i was like uber what are you talking about and she's like no come we're all fucked up at this party i think she was trying to think because i wasn't where, like, like a, you go the extra step with people that i always miss out on i'm always like why why do they get mixed signals i'm like you're so hot uh, <laughs> i would love to eat your pussy <laughs> why do they hit on me <laughs> this is so crazy um what else do i want to talk about oh i wanted to talk about our plane ride oh, together to montreal, to montreal two years ago two years ago esther and i went to the montreal comedy festival we saw Jordan Woods, Kylie Jenner's best friends, who would later turn out to have an affair with Chloe's husband. Did you baby post daddy. that picture again? No, I happened? didn't. I didn't look cute enough. It was to a missed opportunity. It. Anyway, I would have facetuned it for you at the time. Thank you. I was super duper spending all my money on Kylie Jenner lip kits and was obsessed with her life and her Snapchat stories and everything. And so we, when I saw Jordan, I was freaking out. And Annie. Thank God I had Annie there because I was so embarrassed and so scared I couldn't do anything on my own. And Annie just goes, hi. Are, I think you said, like, are you Jordan? Yeah. She's like, yeah. And you're like, can, can I take a picture? My son really is a big fan. <laughs> and My we, young son is a huge fan. <laughs> and we got the selfie, so thank you for that. We got the selfie. I should have taken some more. We did talk to her a little bit. She was riding coach, which was rude. Yeah. With a lot of, like, it looked, like, expensive. She was holding, like, a dress or something, wasn't she? Yeah, and I did for some reason put my number in her phone and that really didn't how like, did that happen i don't know i was like oh the festival like come see a show it's so hard to try to tell people you're famous when you're not that famous Do you <laughs> i'm know not I mean? famous Esther at all I, it's too funny but then so um we get on the plane we switch our seats so we can sit next to each other and immediately a child has shit their diaper <laughs> immediately there's a shitty diaper and it's like all right the mom there's a kid two seats ahead of us and i go okay the mom's going to change the diaper now we're talking 20 30 minutes into the flight this is human defecate like it's everyone's kind of like coughing and trying to act like it's not happening honestly so I'm it like, was brutal i i have a very sensitive nose i smell everything every Jewish. smell bothers me but this was <laughs> <laughs> she can really smell money i'll tell you that <laughs> but, but, I don't have the big Jewish nose on the outside. I have it on the inside. <laughs> she definitely has the inside. Okay. I'm used to smelling things that bother me. Gefilte this was fish. This was the... <laughs> Salmon. <laughs> Locks. This was the level 10 of 911. Shit is in my nose packed in i like like this breathe. kid's sick. i can't have i can't hold a conversation because i can only think about the shit covering my body it's There's just air much. molecules all over me also before that even happened remember where that lady was leaning into your seat and you kept trying to put that i'm gonna post this one when i post it i'll post the videos of this because we have footage of all these things <laughs> happening esther kept trying to put the, the lady wouldn't move over so esther was trying to put her her arm down and the lady just 
wouldn't move. It just kept hitting her and she didn't move. But anyway, it was funny. You'll see. Oh, later. wait. I was so, I was crying. Within 10 seconds of this flight, I'm crying. We didn't stop <laughs> laughing the entire flight. It was so fun. I'll say the flight there this year was very boring. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine the letdown when no one shit on me and I didn't have you there. It was, a, it was a weird thing where it's like they're paying us to go on this trip. This is so fun. I know. It will never so we, be that fun. It will never be that fun again. So we... Uh, so this kid with the diapers, like two seats ahead, and I'm like, he's sick. You know, I got to tell his mom something's going on. So it's going to be awkward to tell this woman to change her kid's diaper, but I was like, as long as the camera's on, I'll do it. <laughs> so I'm like, Esther, film me. So I go over and I squat down and I say to the woman, of course, she's fucking French, so she hates me already. So I, I bend down and I'm like, I'm so sorry, but I think you need to change your son's diaper, right? I imagine the balls that this woman's looking at me like, and she goes, this is not my son, right? And she pulls, that's my French accent. She pulls her son's asshole out for me. Like she Amazing. pulls out the thing. She shows me her son's clean butthole. Can you imagine being an adult and just being like, it, Annie, it wasn't me and I pull my pants out and spread my <laughs> cheeks. I'm like, there's no shit in there. I feel like there's footage of you doing that in the main room with me. <laughs> Wait, tell that story really <laughs> Esther, fast. okay, time out on this story. Esther and I and her friend, Jenna, we were, were in the in, main room of the comedy store. We were in the store. main room of the comedy store. Now, they used to not have a show every night, so the main room used to like be empty often, but now it's always popping off, so like the main room is never never open. But finally, we found a night it where felt we... felt like we were having a sleepover yeah, at so the comedy Yeah, so where we could be store. on the main room stage, just like us girls. It's like, dark. Like, yeah. It just felt so cool. It was like the ghosts of... Sam yeah, that's Kinnison. when the ghosts come out. And so we, for some reason, we're like, let's, let's look at show each other our vaginas. Our vaginas and our, for some reason, I mean, this is what girls do. We want to <laughs> no, see what we got. this is what we do every time. Well, I'm the only girl I know, so <laughs> for real. And I'm the only one that's been with me with girls. And listen, maybe I'm the grim groomer because I'm like, show me that puss. But so we were just like, we were comparing vaginas and tits and stuff. <laughs> no, no, no. Not that explicit, but like we were like peaks. peaking. Like we were, we weren't like bottomless, but we were like pulling, like we were. Anyways. Okay. That's enough of that. So, so then all of a sudden I go, we, we hear something and it's one of the managers. <laughs> it's the room is dead. Okay. Nobody needs to go. Nobody's in this room. coming in and out. Nobody's coming the in and out. There's over. no reason to be there. All of a There's sudden. There's a lot of bathrooms in the comedy store that are closer to the office than this bathroom all of a sudden one of the managers comes to coincidentally use that bathroom <laughs> and that's when i remembered that there are cameras all over that room and that they're just sitting in the office looking at the cameras that's part of their job is just look at the cameras so they just kind of snuck so it's in. just like oh i guess i'll just go see what's going on here <laughs> anyway um behind the paywall you'll be able to see that footage but <laughs> definitely not it's a million dollars and quarters <laughs> to join but so okay, so we're on the plane. I go Amy over. I bend seen down. A baby's ass. I'm seeing a baby's asshole, and I go, "Oh my god!" And then all of a sudden, I realize it's it's got to be the man that's sitting in front of me has shit his pants. It's a grown up that shit his pants. And when I say a man, he wasn't that old. He was older though. He was like late fifties. He was definitely in his eighties. You have no. You're like no a little way. kid. You think really old people are fifty? <laughs> so, no. That he is was funny. I was just recently fi- dating a fifty year old. That's <laughs> not what he looked like. That's so funny. You're Ew, what's so wrong with stupid. Me? I can't believe I dated someone who's like almost fifty. Anyway, gross. But no. um, no. So weird. He was certainly seventies. It was the hair was gray. Okay, and we didn't see the pubes, but they were covered in shit and gray for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm, I'm making eye contact with the woman that's sitting next to him. And she's like, I go, is it him? I'm like pointing. And she goes, I think so. <laughs> she's like, I think so. Like we're all just in this together. And it's been half the flight at this point. It's a five hour flight. We're in Canada. <laughs> we're on Canada. We're above Canada land at this point. So we've already filled out our fucking forms and shit to go to another country. So I, I'm like, I have to handle this for us. I've got to do it. So I go to the flight attendants and I'm like, there's a man in front of me that shit his pants. I don't know what you need to do about it, but I can't. We need an emergency. I man. already <laughs> upset this woman and I can't, I can't go to this man now because if he didn't shit his pants, that's so much worse. Also, actually, I, I think it's even worse if he did shit his pants because what, what can he do? He's, it's just, to, I don't want to nothing... have to feel that, that with him. I'm an empath. So they go, we'll handle it. So I thought they were going to go up to him and say something. But instead, what they did was they brought us a bag of coffee grinds. And they were like, just shove it. So all of us were like, I'm just shoving coffee beans up my nose. Yeah, we're just doing lines of coffee beans. And then they brought us some spray. And there's just footage of Esther just spraying and laughing. 
I mean, it was so funny. And then at some point he gets up and goes to the bathroom. And I swear to God, the entire cabin turned to look to see if there was a shit stain in his pants. And there wasn't. I guess I don't know what he was wearing. Could be diaper situation. So then he goes to the bathroom. He comes back and it doesn't smell anymore. So. Yeah, he, he changed his diaper. Or he threw his underwear out. My my move. Why? Yeah, Esther likes to shit her pants and throw underwear out. You know when I used to do that? I, I Not shitting pants, but I would always try to not hook up with people. And I would wear, like, my most, like, giant purity underwear. Oh. I would wear, like, the ones where you're like, did you steal that from the Anne Frank Museum? Like, is that, what is this? And so I'm just, like, wearing these nasty, disgusting stained underwear. And always I would be, like, there'd be, like, 30 seconds in. I'd be, like. I gotta go to the bathroom just throwing them in the trash. Like, here we go. <laughs> so much easier than I'd pretend to be. <laughs> oh, we have our call. Okay. All right. So we're gonna take a call right now. Um, this is so fun. I feel like we didn't finish all our stories, but that's okay. We're gonna take a call now from a listener and we're gonna see if we can because we are mentally stable. We're two mentally stable gals. Yeah, I agree. I can okay, agree, I can agree to that. On. Oh, yeah. I think this will reach. Hello? Hello. How's Hello. it going? This is Annie Letterman. I have Esther Pavitsky, little Esther, with me. We're calling from Meanspiration. Oh, perfect. Um, what's your name? Um, my name is Nathan. Hi, Nathan. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. So we don't have we don't know what's going on with your problem. So do you mind letting us know what's up? We didn't read your email. Yet. Okay. Um, oh. um. So I've got a roommate that is currently he has someone that stays with him. It's not, you know, technically a girlfriend or whatever, but um, so he's been seeing this person since january and she's really not, not a girlfriend a good person to have um in his life uh mostly you know just because she's using him for quite a few different things um and wait i was under the impression is this my after boyfriend's roommate? go ahead <laughs> <laughs> Esther's using her fiance for a lot of things. What is what <laughs> is she using him for? Um, she's mm-hmm. well now she's staying in our apartment rent free, um, not shipping in for anything, um, using him for his money, his you know a place to stay now. How do you know um, that she doesn't like him? And other things. Do what? How do you know that she doesn't like him? She could just be dating him, but you don't think that she's into him? Well, so I got stuck one day um, while she was doing a FaceTime with her sister and her mom. Um, And she was talking to her mom because she used to live with her ex-boyfriend while she was, like, seeing my roommate. Oh, Um, my God. I love this. She's a bed hopper. And now she lives with us. Right. Um, But so I was stuck... um, while she was doing a FaceTime and she was talking to her mom and she'd been, you know, dating, going on dates with my roommate for quite a while. And, um, her mom was like, where are you at? What are you doing? And she was like, Oh, I'm here at a, uh, uh, with a, uh, uh, a friend. And it was just, you know, it was just super weird because she couldn't, you know, she wouldn't show him. She wouldn't, you know, it was just, it was a really weird thing. To you be a think part that of. she would have um, said to her mom, "Oh, I'm at my boyfriend's house, or I'm at this guy I'm seeing's house," but instead she said, "I'm at a friend's house." Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and it, it was it, it was even like a struggle for her to even say friend. But see, to me, that so doesn't, it was like like I almost feel like actions speak louder than words here because sometimes as a girl or even a guy, like you don't want to tell your mom oh, I have a boyfriend, and then get, like, the 100 questions that will follow. Like, what does he do? You know, Right, all especially these if they just broke, she just broke up with someone else. Right, like, and... it could be, like, people aren't always honest with their parents. But what... Did she... Are, wait, yeah. Are there other reasons that make you think she's not that... Wait, let me ask a question first about this. Did you, when... Did she know you could hear her? Oh, yeah. She okay, so she might have been embarrassed. Well, she I didn't want to... She might not yeah. have wanted to say... 
boyfriend in front of you because then maybe you would say to him also, that they're boyfriend and girlfriend. Future general advice. If you can hear someone's phone conversation, try not to let them know you can hear so they'll, you yes, know. Yes, yeah, hide. <laughs> Get a cup, put it to the door. <laughs> I'm so loud everyone's heard my phone conversations. Wait, so tell us more, like, get yeah. more info about this. Okay, so, um, and then, you know, my roommate's kind of got an addictive personality. Um mm. And it goes into, like, drinking, smoking, that kind of thing. Um, mm. And so <laughs> this this person, she just, you know, from the beginning of the day until they go to sleep, it's just nonstop filling a cup with ice and mm. liquor and uh, drinking. That's upsetting um, around for sure. So, and with his, you know, high blood pressure and stuff like that, it's just kind of making it worse. Okay, I have some um, questions. Are you Time his out. Yeah. How yeah. long have you known? What's your relationship with him? With him, I've known him for like five or six years. Okay. And how did you guys meet? Um, we've known each other since college. Okay. And are you? Do you? Are you seeing anyone? Are you dating someone? Yes. You are. Okay. And then yeah. okay. So is getting out of this apartment an option i know that's hard as hell so maybe it's not no yeah we're i'm yeah i'm gonna at the end of this month and moving out i just so, feel oh you are okay because i just what i'm hearing from all of this is like it's it's a lot of and it seems like it's coming from a nice place but it's a lot of your judgment on him and his relationship that is it you know it mm-hmm. sounds nice and like coming from a friend and all that stuff but it kind of is other people's responsibility to have their own relationships and figure it out i mean if it's yeah but if it's in your life it's in your space like i would i that would drive me crazy like oh now there's this third person they're not paying their share it's not making my rent any cheaper right but but he hasn't mentioned any of the experiences for himself he's worried about the friend do you know what i mean like you're not saying i'm so annoyed she's there you're like i'm upset seeing my friend well i can i can i can talk about that too i was just kind of giving Right, you're just giving the, the whole thing, of, of things. course. Yeah, no, I just was noticed that. Like my worry about him, but um, that's sweet yeah. of you, by the way, too. I'm not, I'm not trying to knock that. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's not. And then, so you're moving out at the end of the month. And yeah. Do you at feel like of, resentful at of the that? End of next month, yeah. Are you like mad? So is it now? Are you just like, how do I get through these next two months? Or how going do you help crazy? him? I'm just trying to see, like, how do I help him? Because he, to me, it seems like he's kind of down on himself and thinking, like, just grasping onto this relationship because he thinks he can't, you know, this is the best thing that's going to happen to him. Uh. And it kind of bums me out because it's like, you can do so much better and you deserve so much better. And it's like, how do you, because, you know, we went to, we went somewhere one day and we talked for about, like, two and a half hours. And I thought I got through to him, and then I came back from work um, from a job where I was away for about a month, and then she was she left her apartment and was now living in our apartment. So this is um, so hard. I relate to this problem so much because I have several girlfriends where I have had these exact situations where they're stuck in these relationships. I'm right here, bitch. <laughs> they're stuck in these relationships, <laughs> and you do talk to them for hours, and you do feel like you've made progress, and then snap like as soon as you're gone and out of like. <laughs> he they, genuinely had this conversation with me last week. I, no, but like I Esther no, had this exact, literal exact conversation. But I'm talking about I've had like five year plus yeah. friends that like are in these things and it is really frustrating because honestly I will give you the advice that I have now taken on myself which sucks but it's I have to let go and now when they come to me for these problems mm-hmm. and I'm not talking about you any because yours is like newer still but like I've I don't I've tell we've talked about this I've told you everything that I feel if you want me to say it again right now I will but the bottom line is you can do better like you're just I think you're stuck in this thing that's kind of ruining your life and it's hard for me to watch and I don't like I just kind of try to set that boundary and tell them you know you know how I feel we've talked about this but it hurts me when we talk about it and then snap the next day you're right back in and I feel like I can't help you anymore and the way that that 
that's right. good for you too because it's setting a boundary for yourself because you are you're like you you live together so you're enmeshed in each other's lives and stuff but you are it, it's a little it, it's kind of not your business too like it's your friend so you want to be good but it's it also could snap him out of it if he sees how serious you're kind of taking it and how you know it does really like it does bother you'd have to keep talking to him about this and have him not see that I, i've definitely yeah. lost friends over having that conversation I'm like you can do better and stuff like that a lot of people they like to be in their mess that's like some that's a yeah. pattern that, that that makes them feel comfortable yeah from who you know whatever their upbringing was One, and they don't want to hear it a lot of times people just want you to agree with them totally and, one other thing that really helped mm -hmm. me was I I had a situation like this with a friend where I felt like I kept seeing them like hurt their life life in a you know maybe not like life or death but in just she's like talking about me and cheese little <laughs> ways and I felt that I was so upset about it all the time and I was like one thing that really helped me move move on from it was I one day I decided I'm gonna say everything I want to say to this person I'm gonna say I think you're doing this I think you're like I said as nicely as I could the things I had been holding in which for you it could be like you know she's taking advantage of you like whatever it is once I felt like okay I've said what I wanted to say I now can walk away knowing that I said what I could to help I did what I could to help the ball is now in that person's right. court because you can't control what another person right. does but and it's if you get it out you might be able to feel okay walking away I don't know yeah because it is about you right so this is all about you and how you feel about this and you can help him as much as you can but you it it's really about you and your relationship and what you're willing to do and I feel like with yeah. with situations like this it's uh, someone told me the term once um, you want to make sure you're not an experience stealer if you people have to fail and they have to go through bad relationships and they have to be treated poorly uh, to to get out of that on their own and and see the light at the end of it too you know like you you can't right. you can't force someone out of something that you know there's some benefit he's getting from that and there's some lesson he's learning how are you feeling from all that you're hearing what do you think no, I think it's great. It's it's nice to talk to people that aren't like directly in the situation mm -hmm. and like um, just kind of hearing outside um, experiences because it you know it helps when you're not you know talking about the same thing over and over again with the same people because it's totally just, you know and especially with room oh, sorry yeah you know. with roommate stuff Go you ahead. get so obsessive you know like it, you know. It, it's so hard. You get so I. I mean, I've had people I've lived, and then yeah. I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I can't stand them. Or but then the second that we move out, I'm like, oh, I, you're my friend and I love you. Yeah. Or I mean, some I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> bye. <laughs> but not that I don't think you have any negative feelings towards your friend or anything. But it, it is, you know, there mm -hmm. comes a point where it's if it's something that you keep talking about and you keep thinking about, maybe there's something in your life you can focus on for yourself that's going to help you move forward and and get make sure your life's good it's good you're moving out it's good you're taking that step and you know you can be there for your friend but it is this is ultimately your life and you have to you have to be happy you have to be focusing on what you're doing and and all that and you can't you're never going to be able to control another person so watching someone not do the things that you want them to do over and over again is going to make you go crazy and it's going to take up all your time and i understand how hard it can be to like set a boundary and walk away from someone that you really really love but I cannot trust enough, like for me, how helpful it was to say what I needed to say that I knew that may help them. And then knowing that I said that, knowing that I did what I could helped me to walk away from a situation that was very, very, very draining on me. And her name is right. Annie Letterman. <laughs> <laughs> no. I liked I liked when you gave me advice last week. It was good. But yeah. Esther will come out and she's like, "Listen, I don't want to make you feel bad, you know all this stuff." And I'm like, "Give it to me, bitch." Like, I want to well, hear. Well, some people can be sensitive. I also I'm like I don't want to be that friend that's just like, "Yeah, no, that's really cool." Like, I want to be honest and I want like because that's what I would want, you know. Yeah. I want your honesty. Right, right. I don't want someone to just tell me like. No, that's really cool. Oh, great. No, he probably is really into you. He just doesn't <laughs> want to fuck you or talk to you. It's weird. He's avoiding your calls. He probably just likes you so much. I had a friend where I had to tell her that about a girl she was seeing. And she, this girl had already broken up with her. was like, I don't want to see. And she was like, I just think it's like her childhood. I'm like, she's not, she doesn't see how good you are. Like, she doesn't get it. And 
she doesn't deserve to have this attention and stuff. And it's like, I don't know this person. She ended up getting, I mean, we're not friends anymore. And there's just some people that just want to hear, they just want you to go. They're just in a thing and they need to keep being in it. And I'm okay with that. I wouldn't take back what I said or anything. It's just, you know, sometimes people, that's kind of why I'm doing this podcast too. It's like, that's what, you know, it's, you got to tell the truth. And I think that you have been telling him and, and he's just not ready to hear it. What do you think you'll do? What do, what do you think the next step will be for you? Um, I think, you know, just letting him know that, Hey, you know, we're, I'm moving out, moving on. Um, and all the best. Um, and like you said, like I've already gone over it a thousand times with you, like where I stand and you know what I think. And it kind of seems like it's falling on deaf ears because there's, you know, there's only so many times you can say it before you're just banging your head on the wall. Yes. Um, I love so, that plan. And I think yeah. I would also even just suggest adding in a, in a little like, I love you. You are going to be my friend for life. But, and, you know, just like really coming at it from a place of love will, I think, be more effective than, you know what I mean? Because I think that plan sounds perfect, though. Yeah. Yeah. And does he come to you to complain about it? Or are you kind of trying to show him that it's not a good sitch? No, he's, so that's the thing is like, you know, alcohol is like a truth serum. So like when he mm. gets drunk, he will vent about it for, mm. you know, as long as he can until he has to go back to the bedroom because she's hanging out in there. And um, it's just like, dude, like what I, it just, it's kind of mind boggling because it's like, you know that it's bad. You don't seem to like it at all. Like why I just, I don't know. That it's very is confusing. so um, frustrating and so draining. And yeah, does he has he ever tried to quit drinking or anything like that? Um, he's tried, um, but it's you know it's just something that you know he'll go a couple days. He's done the same thing with the smoking, where he'll go a couple days, um, and then you know the stress will come back and he'll just go right back into it. So yeah. it's like you know, and this this really isn't helping because it's like you know drinking every single day instead of you know Dealing just having maybe problems, one drink yeah. or you know a drink every other day it's well, I understand you know multiple that. <laughs> every day to where you're slurring your words yeah so. i i definitely i ended up quitting drinking and it was something it just i got to a point where there was just something i needed to do that i couldn't do which was comedy without drinking so or with drinking and i i had right. to get to that on my own a lot of my friends were really worried about me and stuff like that and i just i had to get to it so i think if you just are you know you let him know that you're there to support him you can't really help him spin in this negative spiral anymore, but you are there. And if he needs, wants you to help him get better, then um, you're there, but um, we got to go. Thank you for calling. Thank you for calling. So open and honest. I really, really, yeah. Relate, thanks for calling me. Really relate to this Hell issue. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck yeah. with everything and move the fuck out. Make sure your names off of awesome. all the, thank you. All the bills too. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye yeah. yeah. Thanks. Bye. He was sweet. Yeah, I um I really relate to that. I know. <sighs> like that sounded like a more feminine problem. Like that sounds yeah. like I'm like boys have problems like this too. I know it was kind of nice to um Yeah, but I think with our friends we got to mind our own fucking business sometimes too. All right. So we are going to wrap it up. Esther, this is going to be released. When is this released? Do you think, Breton? Uh, we get, we get to start we get to start releasing things before we can <laughs> Well, when do you, if we release something tomorrow, uh, it'll probably be out three weeks in a week or two, a week or two. Oh, nice. Is there something you want to plug? Yeah. Or? I'm at Esther monster on Instagram and I'm coming to New York. I'm coming to Indiana. I'm coming to San Francisco. If you want tickets to those, uh, excuse me. Oh my God. <laughs> She'll burp will... in a jar and sell it on the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> the ticket link will be in my Instagram bio. Why did I have to burp right in the middle of my plug? Cause you get it. You know how to keep them listening. <laughs> Keep them wanting They more. all listen. They fell asleep with our sentimental seriousness, and yeah. now they woke up with, with your burp. <laughs> your throat queef is what I call it. Um, all right, and I will be at uh, the Blue Club, the Blue Room. Sorry, the Blue Room Comedy Club in Missouri on August sixteenth and seventeenth. And That's so soon. I will be in go at Go Bananas in Ohio, uh, uh, October. 17th the weekend of october 17th 
Um, oh, and I forgot Nashville. Comedy store, all that stuff. And if you guys can, if you have some problems you want to talk about, just uh, please email them into annefrankfan69 at yahoo.com. annefrankfan69 at yahoo.com. And that's spelled like Anne Frank. All right. Thank you, Esther. I love Thanks, you. Thanks, I love you too. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. <laughs>